Guyana's indigenous peoples make up for 10.5% of the country's population. That is approximately 80,000 persons living in the most remote areas. While the hinterland possesses Guyana's richest natural resources with large landscapes and fertile lands, many of its residents do not directly benefit from the riches of their land. In this Info Hub In Depth, we look at how the Amerindian Development Fund has changed that situation in many communities. This initiative provides support for the socio-economic development and environmental enhancement of indigenous communities via the implementation of community development plans. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways and lush and rich in rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. The indigenous peoples are nine distinct tribes. The Arawaks, the Akawayos, the Arakunas, Mukushi, Waro, Wapichan, Waiwai, Patamuna, and Karib. They share a rich, diverse culture and are one of the many ethnic groups that make up the peoples of Guyana. The indigenous peoples are spread across 30,000 square kilometers of Guyana's territory or 14% of Guyana's landmass. The area is larger than the combined areas of the Pomerum Supernam, Essequibo Islands, Demerara Mahaika, Mahaika Barbies, and Upper Demerara Barbies regions. They depend on land for their livelihood. Some use it for fishing, hunting, farming, and for others, its spiritual, physical, social, and cultural connections. Basically, their land is their life. Lacking the human resources and the experience in community development resulted in village being heavily dependent on support from the government and organizations. The lack of proper management skills, experience with projects and suitable human resources saw the residents in indigenous communities becoming passive beneficiaries in development projects. Once the projects were completed, the implementers left projects quickly deteriorated, resulting in low levels of social services, agricultural production, and food security. Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, who is also a former Tusha and resident of Saramo Village Region 9, explained what the coalition government met when it took office in 2015. In my early days in the visits to communities, they were divided politically, in some instances religiously. But I had to listen. I've been in a, a to show many years ago, and I learned that the best way to make a decision is listen, and listen hard and long. And to be able to take the verbal assaults for making a good decision because persons are pent up with anger and persons sometimes are probably they have been cheated out of something and in our cases like the land uh, promises have been able to see the changes from then to now Persons are more receptive. We've seen persons now taking on their role. Uh, we have seen the willingness 
and the understanding now to know that to be able to fish every day by yourself and earn is the way to go rather than be being given your food every day. In order to remove the culture of dependency within the indigenous communities and bring the residents into the mainstream of national development, the Amrinian Development Fund was established and implemented. The ADF represents a multi-pronged, long-term and integrated strategy for achieving and fostering the socio-economic development of communities through community-driven business ventures. According to Minister Alicock, the ADF has provided an opportunities for the indigenous peoples to discover and develop their resources. The indigenous peoples have lived all their lives in in the, the hinterland, living off the, the land where um, you might have heard the low carbon development strategy. Uh, they, they are aware of what is needed in the low carbon development strategy and they call for the government now for economic development in the next 50 years and beyond. So the support by the ADF comes at a time that is very, very crucial. And it is because of the eventual takeoff of this country. When I say takeoff, I mean in, in the true sense of a good life for our, all our people and more so for the indigenous peoples. For many years, our people have been, as you know, in the hinterland, uh, looking as though they were totally cut off in terms of information, in terms of access to communities, and appropriate education. So the ADF has given us the opportunity for these communities to begin to find their strengths in this, in this uh, growing economy. This $1.2 billion project funded that was called Community Development Plans. Micro capital grants amounting to $5 million each were made available to communities to pursue business ventures. The project was executed in two phases. The pilot phase one of the project targeted 27 communities, while phase two captured 161 villages from nine of the 10 administrative regions. Among the communities which benefited are Bambo Landing, Cubana, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa and Islands, Warapoca, Bumbury, Kamwata, Lower Cariabo, St. Dominic, Whitewater, Orinoc, Sibai, St. Monica Karawa, Kopui, Mainstay Wayaka, Oriala, Cashew Island, Agatash, Batavia, Jawala, Kako, Philippi, Maikwak, Paramakatoi, Campbelltown, Kumu, Mokomoko, Napi, Parishara, St. Ignatius, Apateri, Crashwater, Rewa, Sarama, Sand Creek, Sawari Row, Shiriri, Shulinab, Aishalton, Rockstone, Wikikalkuni, Wairuni, Great Falls, just to name a few. Among the undertakings executed are agricultural production, village infrastructure, tourism, manufacturing, village business enterprise, and transportation. The Rockstone Processing Facility is one of the many successful ventures executed. Rockstone is situated about 30 minutes west of Linden in Region 10. The women of the village are fully involved in the community development project that produces ground cassava byproducts such as cassava bread, casserip, tapioca and farine. The community gets its largest market from the cassava bread. The women produce over 100 cakes of cassava per month.
We make our marketing in Linden, our Tosho, most of all, he helped do marketing. And while I help just in this committee doing uh, um, other fine processing along with the women. It's not like the women they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, but sometimes you have to come and give them a, you know, a prompt. Support. I support them, and we have our different marketing system in Linden. The project itself started about two years ago with four acres of cassava and provided employment for a number of persons within the community. Tushal Carter explained. Um, we started about two years ago in... Uh, receiving the funds in two tranches. Um, after we received SIM, we started with the actual building. Um, the process was in phases, uh, the cement work and then uh, getting in the machinery, getting the staff in and then meeting all the other requirements. It was a checklist that we were working with. We also had some interviews and some, I think it was the UNDP personnel that came in to check the process and how it was going. Um, in relation to the community, we started off with four acres. We've established, we've further gone into five acres of cultivation of cassava. At the start of the project, we had several persons, uh, community personnel, whether it's from uh, the guys from the saw, the saw operators filling, clearing. Then we went into the area where we had the ladies planting and uh, reaping and cleaning the farm. And then we went to the stage where we went into actual production. At uh, the production level, we've got shifts of ladies that are working uh, approximately monthly at this point in time. Uh, they receive a very small stipend that we would love to see improved, but because of our financial limitations, um, we are unable to do so. A young mother of eight, Cynthia James, has been involved in the project from its inception. She tells us how the program has provided her with the tools that will empower her to provide for her family. I feel proud because the work of the um, community, well, it benefits me well because at sometimes at I work and I get money and I have my children to support and so I, I don't depend on my husband alone so I work here and I benefit a little bit of money. James has a message for her fellow women in the community. I encourage them to work along with the um, community and at, at the CDP work along, come and work and they would get help even so. This project has generated a considerable amount of profit since production began. In relation to our income, we've approximately um, had 300 to 500 uh, thousand dollars in after paying uh, the employees etc and other expenses because we've we actually diversified um, to having a shop. You would have passed the shop uh, right by the Parm Kushi there. It was right up here next to the signboard and we were selling the products here. But what we found that many of the shop, the drivers or the truck um, operators were not keen on stopping at this juncture. So we moved it down there. We also tried to do a breakfast morning where we would sell the byproducts of the cassava and uh, do some pepper pot and do the farine, etc. And uh, those were some forms of income. But we've actually utilized some of those going back into the Armenian Heritage Day um, activity and giving back to the community as well. We also are the cassava bread that is not fit for the market. We distribute those to our old pensioners within the community who are unable to basically do that kind of hard work because of um, some kind of ailment, or, or so, et cetera. So. Rockstone was one of the communities recognized by the ADF for its hard work, dedication, and successful implementation of the project. Women comprised 55% of the persons who participated in the preparation of implementation plans for the CDP, with 2,886 women out of a total of 5,256 persons participating. Out of 1,244 persons, 652 women were trained in various areas including terminologies and concepts, financial accountability and management, marketing and work plan preparation. They are assisting in the management of their community businesses.
This is Doreen Fraser and her niece Lisa Fraser. They reside in St. Dominique, a small riverine village located in Region 1, Barima Waini. It has a population of just under 100 persons. This community's development project is ginger farming. But why did the community choose this crop? Well, while ginger is the most difficult to cultivate, it is considered one of the most lucrative commodities. Lisa Fraser is one of the 11 farmers whom the project has created employment for in St. Dominique. She explained how the project has impacted her life and that of other residents in the village. Well, when we first started, we used to plant like a very small amount, like a five rod bed. And it's like in a few years back, ginger start pick up really selling. So that is like from three years back, we start farming like 14 acre, 13 acre. And from then we start going up. Farming is what we normally look up to, but it play a great part in, in, in the farming because when we get the money, it come in on time to the farm, you know, you utilize it on the farm and not somewhere else. So in the line of farming, to some of the farmers, it benefit them because some farmers really didn't have like the, um, a lot of plants and when it, it come in, it come in useful that they could get the money and buy plants and start from there on, get the farm more big and so. so. That's how it could benefit the community. That's how it benefit to some of the farmers, most of the farmers. These family own one plot of land which they cultivate their own ginger crops, with a percentage of their profits being given back to the village council. Almost everybody like it. Everybody actually say, well, it's something good they, they gain from it. From, and it's mostly based upon the project, as you ask. Okay, we, we plant back from the project. We had to sell from there to get the money to pay back to the bank. The rest that you remain with, okay, well, you extend another acre again towards the, the project. Well, we sell to the Huskers. We promised that we were waiting for $200 a pound so that we could be able to pay back this ginger project, and so far we get the 200 and even more. Over at Lower Cariabo, the village are involved in the production of turmeric. Turmeric is a plant in the same botanical family as ginger. It is known to have significant health benefits and is the main ingredient in curry powder. They tell us about some of their challenges. Well, the project in our community, all of us in the community was benefit a little from it. And we go so far with it. The market fail we to do we extending so that's why we can extend on this short period of time for this year because we're supposed to be done extend and yet got a second crop to continue to develop our community I think everything was going good and fine until the times come for market they start market the right way, everything starts. And after come a time that Nari promised to take, they will take all of our produce. They take was the first time that they took 8,000 pounds. The next month they took 5,000 pounds. After that, they say, they had, to, they had a drying problem, I think. So they had to build a dryer where they can dry the turmeric so they could take any amount. We had other markets, the local, that's the huskers that come. Some they would take two bags, three bags, and that way they took. But afterward, when they had it, all started to growing back. So now most people complain that when they buy it and they carry it, all gets soft, so they don't, we lose. The community has several pounds of turmeric on their hands and are now seeking markets, Wong explained. Some people are the to plants. A man went from um, Pomeroon. He doing um, coconut farming. So now he said he come here about turmeric, he wants to know how it grows, so he come and he look wrong. So he now ordered 1,000 pounds of the growing one. And somebody else ordered 2,000 pounds, so we can still get our turmeric. 
Over time, the community has planned to diversify into other crops to sustain their community project. Kabukobori village in the Pomerum Supernam region also had some challenges with their CDP project. Their initial project was peanut cultivation. However, the residents did not have the necessary skill in soil preparation, and so it was aborted. The community plans to use their second tranche of disbursement to divert into cassava production. The new venture will see them manufacturing scratch rip and cassava bread and other byproducts from the bitter cassava. Tushaw Sherman Lloyd explains. 95% of Kabakaburi indigenous people use cassava bread and um, we see that is more feasible so that we can go into that project, in the CDP project. Tushaw Lloyd said that there is a huge market for cassava and believes that once developed, a cassava processing venture in Kabakaburi will be successful. We have at least presently now we have a man by the name of Garden Lawless who needs bitter cassava like every week 2,000 spong and there are several others that need 40 dollars a pong on the spot. So there is a large market for the manufacturer um, cassava well as the raw one. All right, and um, this would be able to help us that our children could go to school. They will... Um, have access to more education when we harvest this bitter cassava. Kabukaburi's neighboring village, St. Monica, has a very successful woodworking project where the community makes a wide variety of furniture, including bed, chairs, tables, and wardrobe, among others. Several village youths are involved in the project. They are receiving training at the Board of Industrial Training in Furniture Making. To show Thomas, Charles said the furniture is made to order. He is also seeking a market through the Ministry of Education to provide furniture to the schools in the region. With this CDP project, that was a um, 2016 grant, this is at St. Monica, a total of $5 million. That was the construction of this building, and then do some training. Right down there. The trainer that we, have, that we had here was not from this community. Three trainees were employed from this community. And the, the main thing was to like, make furniture, furniture, different furniture. And one idea was that um, we have the material, wood, we have lots of wood, and to the best quality. So that, you know, this was intention to supply the community, and later on, as we, you know, look for better market, we could be able to supply other communities, like was even be looking at, that's at the, um, supplying this school furniture. Eve Samuels, a resident of the village, spoke of the positive impact the project has on the young people in the community. I have pieces of wood that they can make, like um, rolling pin, kneading board, towel hanger, um, even clothes hanger, right? It's a time I think is important, and the community have the wood to produce to do those things. It can't work and it was going to help the young people because they are interested. I can assure you that these young people are interested. Looking at them working on that boat, I think is one that can be able to show us that they have skills, the ability, and they can be able to work. Right, but it's just time with us. Woodworking is also being done in Kobano Village in the Moruko sub-region. Troy Peters, councillor of Kobano Village, explained that the project had originally started in 2008 what was extended under the ADF project. So, so far, the business is really productive. Um, during last year, we received our CDP funding, and since we received our CDP, it's it really performing much than before. Youths who are involved in the project and were trained and certified tell us how their lives have been positively impacted. This trend has been uh, impact me greatly in my, my uh, furniture making skills and of course I will use it to go back into my community and work in the, uh, furniture, the furniture factory there and to display some of the skills and talents that I have learned from this workshop. It's a nice work, great work so that when I come out from here I could be a professional woodwork trainer. One of the major economic activities in the Rupununi Savannah 
Region 9, is cattle rearing. As such, several villages have opted to do cattle ranching as part of their CDP. Tushal of St. Ignatius Dennis Benedict said that the project began with 22 heads of cattle and presently six of them have cars. He noted the impact of the project on the village economy. We have animals, especially the bulls we slaughter and jobs we can like building now we can afford to pay or two or three persons to continue the job and then at sometimes we give loans to the people who need like for educational ways that is how the village villagers benefit in Shulinab, in the deep south Rupununi, the residents are being resourceful and converting the cow's skin into leather products. Well, we started um, slowly. Uh, we had three, three um, phases of the project. One was our, our um, farm, right? A normal slash and born farm, but well, was a, a sizable farm. One was our plant corral to, um, to boost up our cattle rearing, a strong corral, and this tannery here, right? Um, right now we're focusing on this tannery here because we have a lot of um, cow hides that we can make use of, right? And um, this was constructed to accommodate this next to the creek nearby as to um, easy access of water. These projects were done during a consultative process elaborated by the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs. Eligibility of a community was confirmed when the CDP's business venture were determined to be relevant and feasible. Prior to the establishment of the projects, the communities were required to establish community management teams or CMTs. The members of these groups underwent extensive training in a number of key areas. Implementation of the projects was not without challenges, one of the major ones being the change in village councils following a village election every three years. The ADF has partnered with several government and non-governmental stakeholders for the implementation of the ADF. Some of the agencies that the ADF has partnered with are the Small Business Bureau, the Ghana Livestock and Development Authority, the National Agriculture Research and Extension Institute, the Guyana Forestry Commission, Guyana Energy Agency, and the new Guyana Marketing Corporation. These partners have resulted in the provision of mostly technical services and assisted in the capacity building to communities. Chief Executive Officer of the Small Business Bureau, Lowell Porter, said that his department will be assisting these businesses to see what further assistance can be provided. To date, it has been recorded that over $66 million has generated from the respective projects. The foundation of the ADF has been the poverty reduction strategy, coupled with the low carbon development strategy, which is now repurposed into the Green State Development Strategy, GSDS. The GSDS aims at combating poverty while responding to the impact of climate change by avoiding deforestation and creating a low carbon climate resilient economy as the basis for environmental, social and economic transformation of the country. The ADF project came to an end in December 2018. However, systems were put in place by the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs to continue to monitor the projects and provide further training and assistance to ensure sustainability within the various Indigenous communities. You have been watching another edition of InfoHub In Depth. Do join us again.